Imagine a dimly lit room, the soft crackle of an old projector, and the anticipation that shrouded your senses. The year was 1933, and you found yourself seated in a velvet-covered chair, eyes fixed on the flickering screen. The opening credits rolled, and there it was the iconic title, Son of Khan. Your heart quickened, for this was your very first encounter with a cinematic masterpiece that would etch itself into the annals of film history. As the story unfolded, you were transported to the mysterious Skull Island, a realm teeming with colossal creatures and unforeseen adventures. The image of a young, endearing Khan Jr. tugged at your heartstrings, forging a connection that transcended the boundaries of time. With each passing frame, you were swept away by the charm, the thrills, and the unexpected moments that left an indelible mark on your cinematic journey. Do you remember the rush of emotions as you witnessed the unlikely bond between man and beast? Or perhaps it was the thrilling escapades, the daring escape from perilous situations, or the heartwarming moments that stayed with you all these years. Son of Khan wasn't just a movie, it was an experience, an adventure that you embarked upon, leaving you with memories that still bring a smile to your face. Now, as we journey back to that unforgettable year, and explore some fascinating random facts about this cinematic gem, let's rekindle the magic of Son of Khan together. So, sit back, and prepare to be captivated once more by the enchanting world of Khan, and his adventurous son. Son of Khan, released in 1933, is a follow-up to the iconic film King Khan. Directed by Ernest B. Skodzak, and produced by Miriam C. Cooper, the movie continued the story of the colossal ape but took a different tone. While the original film was a grand spectacle of adventure and terror, Son of Khan is a more lighthearted and heartfelt sequel. The film's plot centers on Carl Denham, the filmmaker from the first movie, who is now facing legal troubles due to the destruction caused by Kong in New York City. He returns to Skull Island in search of treasure and redemption, where he discovers a much smaller and friendlier offspring of Kong. This new Kong, often referred to as Little Kong, becomes an endearing character and forms a unique bond with Denham. Son of Khan diverges from its predecessor in its tone, focusing on humor, empathy, and the consequences of human actions. The movie's style combines adventure elements with comedy and drama, making it a departure from the original's dark and thrilling atmosphere. It also features impressive stop-motion animation by Willis O'Brien, which was groundbreaking for its time. Although Son of Khan may not have left as significant a mark on popular culture as the original, it is remembered as a charming and heartwarming sequel that added depth to the Khan mythology. It showcased the potential for character development in monster movies and provided a more nuanced perspective on the consequences of exploiting the natural world. Son of Khan remains a classic in the history of monster cinema, demonstrating that even in the world of giant apes, there can be room for compassion and redemption. Recordings of Fay Ray's screams from King Kong were used in the 1933 movie Son of Kong. This cinematic tidbit connects the two iconic films through the shared sound of Ray's screams, adding a layer of nostalgia for fans of the original King Kong. Son of Kong, directed by Ernest B. Skodzak, was a sequel to the 1933 classic. While it may not have reached the same heights of fame as its predecessor, it kept a piece of the original's spirit by incorporating Fay Ray's vocal expressions of fear and distress. These screams, originally recorded for King Kong, found a second life in the Son of Kong, further solidifying the connection between the two films. The reuse of Ray's screams serves as a reminder of the enduring influence and legacy of King Kong in the world of cinema. It's a small but intriguing detail that showcases how sound can bridge the gap between two related movies. And there you have it, a curious fact connecting the screams of Fay Ray in two classic films, King Kong and its sequel, Son of Kong. This has been a brief look into the history of Son of Kong and its connection to the iconic King Kong, all wrapped up in a scream Fay Ray's scream. Fascinating, isn't it? In the 1933 movie Son of Kong, there's a little-known fact that adds an interesting layer to the film's history. The first ragtime song heard when the character Carl Denham, portrayed by Robert Armstrong, enters the tavern before deciding to set sail is the Maple Leaf Rag by Scott Joplin. This catchy tune set the mood for Denham's adventurous journey to Skull Island and added a touch of musical nostalgia to the film. Furthermore, it's worth noting that Robert Armstrong, who played Carl Denham, 
and the executive producer Miriam C. Cooper passed away only one day apart. Armstrong passed away on April 20th, 1973, while Cooper followed on April 21st, 1973. Their close proximity in death serves as a remarkable coincidence, and a testament to the enduring legacy of the original King Kong film, and its sequel, Son of Kong. Lastly, while it may not have been used in the film, it's interesting to know that the name given to the Junior Kong was Kiko. RKO's promoters assigned the name Kiko to the offspring of King Kong after the completion of the film. Kiko is a shortened form of King Kong, and adds a bit of trivia to the movie's production history. These lesser-known details about Son of Kong offer a glimpse into the film's behind-the-scenes quirks and connections, making it an even more intriguing part of cinematic history. In the 1933 movie Son of Kong, several actors reprised their roles from the original King Kong. Notable among them were Robert Armstrong as Carl Denham, Frank Riker as Captain Inglehorn, Victor Wong as Charlie, Noble Johnson as the Native Chief, and Steve Clement as the Native Witch King. This continuity in casting added a sense of familiarity for viewers who had enjoyed the first film. One interesting tidbit about the film is the creation of the Little Kong puppet. This puppet was actually repurposed from the long face Kong model used in the iconic T-Rex battle seen in the original King Kong. For Son of Kong, the puppet underwent a transformation. The metal armature that served as its skeleton was stripped of its rubber and fur and remodeled to resemble a younger albino gorilla. This adaptation allowed the filmmakers to present a younger version of Kong in the sequel. Another intriguing aspect is the model of the Styracosaurus used in the film. This model now belongs to Peter Jackson, a filmmaker known for his remake of King Kong in 2005. It's a testament to the enduring appeal of the original film and its sequel, as well as the connection between filmmakers across generations. In summary, Son of Khan brought back familiar faces from the first film and repurposed iconic models like the Little Khan puppet to craft a compelling sequel. Additionally, the legacy of these models lives on with the Styracosaurus model finding a new home with Peter Jackson. In the making of the 1933 movie Son of Khan, a behind-the-scenes conflict unfolded between the producers and the animator, Willis O'Brien. During the production of the original King Kong, the producers, Marion C. Cooper and Ernest B. Skodzak, had little involvement in the stop-motion animation process, which was O'Brien's domain. However, on Son of Kong, they took a more hands-on approach, much to O'Brien's displeasure. This interference led to tensions, and O'Brien, frustrated by the situation, started to skip work at the studio. As a result, Buzz Gibson had to step in and complete the animation without O'Brien's expertise. O'Brien went as far as asking Cooper to remove his name from the movie's credits, but the producer declined the request. This clash between artistic vision and production control sheds light on the challenges faced during the making of Son of Khan. It serves as a reminder that filmmaking is not always a seamless process, and creative differences can arise even among seasoned professionals. In an interesting twist, although Andero and Jack Driscoll were the central characters in King Kong, they are neither seen nor mentioned in Son of Kong. This omission adds a unique aspect to the film's narrative, leaving audiences to wonder about the fate of these characters in the sequel. The making of Son of Khan was marked by both creative conflicts and intriguing choices, making it a noteworthy chapter in the history of filmmaking. Despite the challenges faced, the film remains a part of cinematic history, showcasing the complexities of bringing a sequel to a beloved classic to life. As we journeyed through the captivating world of the 1933 film, Son of Kong, we've unearthed a treasure trove of memories and emotions. This cinematic gem, often overshadowed by its colossal predecessor, has a charm all its own. Now, as the credits roll and the curtains draw to a close, we invite you to take a moment to reflect. Son of Kong may be a smaller scale adventure, but it possesses an enchanting allure that's hard to forget. Perhaps you were enchanted by the endearing personality of Little Kong or found solace in the quieter, more introspective moments of this classic sequel. Maybe it was the nostalgic backdrop of Skull Island that transported you back in time or the powerful message that even the most unlikely of friendships can flourish amidst chaos. We encourage you to share your cherished memories and reflections on Son of Kong. What scenes tugged at your heartstrings or which character resonated with you most? 
Were there lessons learned or newfound perspectives gained from this overlooked masterpiece? Your thoughts, like hidden treasures, deserve to be unearthed and shared with fellow admirers of cinema. So, don't hesitate to let your voice be heard. Thank you for embarking on this cinematic journey with us. Your time and interest are truly appreciated. We look forward to hearing your thoughts and memories as we continue to explore the rich tapestry of film together. Until our next adventure, keep the magic of the movies alive with cinematic wonder and gratitude.